Tap it to go lay down. I'm just glad she's not eating lettuce anymore on our couch. <laughs> Dogs. Where did she get the lettuce from? I may have given it to her. Welcome to Keto on the Couch, episode 103. I'm Rachel. And I'm Joe. And we're Two, two Crazy, crazy Ketos. Ketos. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. Yes, welcome to the more than 1,200 new subscribers since the last Keto on the Couch. Now, here on Two Crazy Ketos, we do different things like recipe videos, and we do product reviews, and we talk about various keto topics. And then every Monday, we sit down on the couch for Keto on the Couch. We just kind of talk about what's going on in our lives for the week. You can find us in different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And we have a website, which is 2crazyketos.com. And that's where you're going to find all of our different recipes. Now, we do upload at least five new videos every single week. So make sure you subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to hit the little bell icon. And that way, every single time we upload a new video, you'll be alerted to it. And I've got an alert for you. What is that? If you're watching this right now, it's March 1st. But what if they're watching it on March 2nd? Well, well, welcome to March still. We're marching <laughs> forward with this year, whether we're ready or not. I cannot believe it's March. Think about what was going on last March. Oh right? my gosh. We had no idea what was coming. No, we didn't. I think it was right in March. So March, this March is going to be awesome. It is. I'm excited for March. We actually had some cool things that happened to us last week uh, where we did some firsts in our lives. Yes. Now, before we do that, we do have a sponsor for today's video. How exciting. And that sponsor is Perfect Keto, we if I can put Perfect it up right. Keto. So Perfect Keto has a complete line of keto products. Um, and this is one of my favorites. They have oh, their this. collagen. Uh, my favorite flavor is now the new strawberry. It used to be peanut butter. But used before be, that, yours was chocolate. Yeah, it used to be chocolate, but this one has completely dethroned chocolate. Let us know down in the comment section if you've tried the new strawberry collagen. I drink one scoop every day with a raw egg, some almond milk, some ice, a little bit of water. I drink it as a smoothie on my way out the door. I just love the taste of it. It's like it's like strawberry milk. They also have some MCT oil powder, which we actually prefer over using the liquid MCT oil because you get a little bit less uh, bathroom, bathroom pyrotechnics, pyrotechnics with yeah. that. They have some delicious bars. This is the new banana bread flavor. If you like a candy banana, yeah. this has got the candy banana. If you were looking for like a fresh banana bread flavor, uh, I would look at some of the other flavors. Yeah. But if you like candy banana, like I like candy banana, this is really good. Yep. And they also have cookies. This happens to be my favorite flavor of cookie, the snickerdoodle, which I don't like snickerdoodle. I don't know how that but happens. But I love their snickerdoodle cookies. That is I don't your know why. favorite. And they also do have some exogenous ketones, which is going to be the subject of something we're going to talk later on. But uh, we do like their exogenous ketones. They're tasty. They're not going to help you lose weight, but they will help you with getting some mental clarity. Uh, maybe, you know, getting you past that little keto flu because of the electrolytes in there. And they will also give you a little bit of increased energy for performance in the gym. I call it the whoa mama effects because it's like whoa mama so if you are interested in perfect keto products there is a link down below in the description and also there is a coupon code which is two crazy ketos and that will get you 20 percent off of your order yeah now um this week we went to the keys for me the first time it was not the first time for me to go to the keys but it was the first time to leave the keys and not have like a second degree sunburn. Yeah, like, you got a little bit of sun there, but this is two days later and you're glowing. No more red. My mom left like her butt cheek in Key West for sure. She would totally testify to that. Like she fell asleep. I can still remember it. Mm -hmm. Like it's imprinted on my brain. She fell asleep stomach side down on a lawn chair in Key West, woke up not a happy camper. Yeah. We were happy campers. There's something about going down to the Keys because you're surrounded by all that water and the sun doesn't feel so bad. It doesn't. And then you're like, yeah, I'm good. And you're out there for 20 minutes and then you go inside and then you touch yourself and you're like, oh my gosh, what did I just do? One thing, it's such a beautiful 
beautiful color on the water, mm -hmm. right? I mean, it is like the blue in your eyes blue. It is so aqua blue. Do I have blue eyes? You have super blue oh, eyes, I, babe. I, I didn't know that. Super blue. Okay. And and so I don't know if they if that just lulls you into like a false sense of like everything's gonna be fine. Mm -hmm. It's not. So what other Cover firsts up. did we have? So we went down to the Keys, first time for me, lived here for 26 years, never raw, went down there. Raw oysters. Rachel had raw oysters for the first time. It's a texture thing. It's just a texture, right? They actually don't have a bad, which if they have a taste, something something's is wrong, wrong. Right? I actually like raw oysters, but you gotta make sure you get them right. Because if they don't clean them right, they're all gritty and sandy. There and was no grit. No, they were really, really good. We went to this place called Porky's, which if you ever go down to uh, Marathon Big Pine Key area, definitely recommend going to Porky's. Great really food, delicious great food. We got a rack of ribs for $22 because they sell it a la carte. You can get it as a meal or was you can get a, it a la carte. Was it a dinosaur? And I mean, I cannot even explain like the, the amount of meat that were on those ribs. Huge. We ate a half between the two of us, took a half home and it took me two more days to eat the other half of rack. We also had some great smoked wings, so, but they had all kinds of seafood there, a fresh Florida Gulf shrimp. You're not mentioning the most important food item. I don't think I've ever been in a restaurant that sold that before. A giant basket. Like a big basket. Of fried pork belly. And it was $5. $5. $5. Man, I would eat that every single day. <laughs> It was so stinking good. Rachel wants to go back down there just to get the pork belly. She's like, you can have all the other food. Just get me like five baskets of the pork belly. Yeah, I'd be a happy camper. <laughs> so yeah, we also went down to Key West. We had a great little vacation. And it's funny because people of us are just like, what do I do when I go camping for meals? And we generally don't go out to eat when we go camping. But I was like, we're in the Keys. You kind of got to get that Florida seafood. You got to do one. We were there for three days. But we did a lot of meal prep ahead of time, right? We brought our chicken salad with us and uh, we brought some chili with us, made some keto chili. Well, and even if you know you're going on a road and staying in a hotel that's got, most hotels now have like a mini fridge of some sort. Mm -hmm. So just packaging stuff from like, you know, getting a decent cooler that yep. you can take in the car yep. and then transferring it over. A lot of times the hotel will have at least a small microwave and it'll have a mini fridge. Yeah. And I will use both of those things mm -hmm. with meal prep stuff. And then it's just done. I yeah. loved it because we weren't sure when we got there, is there gonna be a lot of grocery stores? And there really weren't. Yeah, well, there were a couple, but they weren't like around the corner. We're used to yeah. everything like within walking distance. Right, so I was really glad that we meal prepped so that we just had stuff, didn't yeah. have to think about it. Now, because we went to the Keys, there's another first coming. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you hit the little bell icon because we're going to be videoing this. So we've made the decision after going to the Keys that we are going to sell our tandem uh, kayak and we are getting stand up paddle boards. I am not somebody that balances well. I mean, I think we've talked about it before that like I tried a step class once. Right. And it was it was like watching Lucille Ball like try to do anything on on the I Love Lucy show. I mean, I was frantically trying to keep keep up. And I'm very worried about the shenanigans. I like your new uh March Cup let the shenanigans begin. I'm afraid of the shenanigans we're going to get into. I think it's going to be good. I did not buy a tandem stand-up paddleboard. I, I thought myself like... Can you imagine? The two of us trying to like, okay, Rachel. Yeah. You like stand up. Now I'm going to stand up. And I was just like, we're going to end up in the water. And we will be using this on some of the different like rivers and springs here in Florida, which means you are dealing with alligators. Now, of course, when you go to the Keys, you're dealing with crocodiles. Uh, but... I, anything that's going to prevent the possibility of us falling in the water more than we absolutely have to. I feel like if we got a tandem one, it would be like Kate Winslet and Leonardo DiCaprio trying to share a door. <laughs> like one of us is going under. One of us is going under, at least, at least. The thing about, I was thinking about with the paddleboard is some of the springs you go to, you're allowed to paddleboard, but you're not allowed to go swimming. Really? Yeah, like Silver Springs. You can't go swimming. Oh, yeah. But you can go paddleboarding. But you're in the water. So what if I just accidentally fall in the water when it's 98 Are degrees outside? Are you that outside? guy? You're that kid in class that's and, always trying to push the boundaries. Of and run around the rules. You know what makes the best coach in lacrosse and football? The guy knows the rule book. You know why it makes him the best coach? 
Because he, he knows how to circumvent all the rules. Use them to his advantage? You use the rules. Because here's the thing. Most coaches, and I, I've officiated three sports, baseball, football, and lacrosse. Most coaches don't even know the color of the rule book. It's, I'm not kidding. Most coaches, we, we did, I did Little League for years. Little League, the color of the rule book was the same the entire time. It was always green. You would ask a coach, what's the color of the rule book? I don't know. That means you've never opened it, right? But if you learn the rules, you learn things that you can do that nobody else knows you can do. You find the way around the rule. That's how you develop plays. Is that it? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not allowed to go swimming in the spring, but if I am allowed to go paddle boarding, there is a chance I'm going to fall off the paddle board when it's 98 degrees outside and I need to get a little wet. Like whoops? Yeah, but you're whoops. saying whoops before you even get into the water. Possibly. <laughs> okay. We got uh, a good keto on the couch today. Now, if you're new to our channel, welcome. Welcome. Um, here's on Keto on the Couch. We like to celebrate our subscribers. We like to answer questions, comments, things from last week's Keto on the Couch. We talked briefly about what's going on in our life, which is pretty much we're just moving along. Uh, we put out a great video this week about finding a partner. Now, if you're still looking for a partner, if you don't have somebody in real life, that's okay. There are a lot of people in our Facebook family group. There's a link down below. Go join. You can also go join our Discord group and uh, just find somebody, even if they're virtually, that can kind of keep you accountable. Some people yeah. are talking about they need like a here and now. That's what Discord is for. Yes. So Facebook, you're going to put a post up and then you got to wait for a response. There's almost always somebody in Discord. So you can go into Discord, which is completely free. You sign up. You're going to type something in and somebody's going to answer. It's a live chat room. And yeah. there's almost always somebody in there. So that's a great place if you need that immediate like, hey, I'm about to eat five dozen Oreo cookies. Stop me, please. <laughs> Say something. Encourage. Encouraging. So yeah, so go ahead and do that. But yeah, Kid on the Couch is all about our subscribers. We like to celebrate your wins and we like to also discuss any kind of issues or anything like that you're having. So this week, there has been an issue that has been coming up both in our live as well as several times within our Facebook group. So we wanted to kind of address that issue. Yeah. Though we do have another video coming out about it and that is exogenous ketones. So a lot of people have been asking, what do I need them for? Do I need them? Should I take them? Which company should I buy? And again, Perfect Keto has exogenous ketones. We are affiliates yeah. of Perfect Keto. If you purchase products from Perfect Keto using our link below, it does help the channel. Here's what I'm going to tell you on exogenous ketones. You don't need them if you're just trying to lose weight. Okay. As a matter of fact, they will not they will not help you to lose weight. Not Perfect Keto, not any other company, not the multi-level marketing company that starts with a P that people are pushing all over Facebook and Instagram and everything else. They will not help you to lose weight. Are there benefits to exogenous ketones? Yes, there absolutely are, especially if you've had a brain injury or you're trying to, you know, raise cognitive function, like they have a place. If you're somebody that works out a tremendous amount and you're looking for a boost before a very intensive workout, absolutely they will help you. Mm -hmm. So what they're gonna do is there's three things. First of all, exogenous ketones, the ones here from Perfect Keto, uh, and a lot of the other companies, they all, the ketones themselves all come from the same company. It's called Go BHB. And then you have companies like Perfect Keto and stuff that kind of blend their own flavors and use good sweeteners. We like Perfect Keto because they use good products. We have some of these. We occasionally take them. But what are you going to take them for? Number one, they're bound, they're salt, so they're bound to electrolytes, so that will help you boost electrolytes a little bit. They will help you with a little bit more cognitive function, like say you've got a test or you've got yeah. a meeting or like you've just, you need to do a cram session or you just, you need that little bit of extra boost in your brain. That's where they're going to come into play. That's where they're going to help you. Again, like Rachel said, if you've had any kind of neurological disorders, if you're trying to battle things like Alzheimer's and stuff where you need to have really high ketones for that kind of stuff, that's where they're going to help. Where else will they help? They will give you a brief amount of increased energy. So if you're going in for a workout, you want that little bit of extra boost, 
exogenous ketones are going to help. That's why you'll see people like who are in the workout who don't even do keto, they take BHBs. That's what they are, yeah. exogenous ketones. Now, again, I know somebody right now is typing down in the comment section, you don't know what you're talking about. Ketones absolutely will help you lose weight. They help me lose weight. They do not help you get into nutritional ketosis. And just because anybody who tells you that, first of all, they're either misinformed, which is possible, yeah, or they're lying to sell you a product. Right. Because Perfect Keto, who sells exogenous ketones, has this on their website, and I wanted to put it up here, and I'm gonna put a link to this article down below. This is from the company that actually sells exogenous ketones. So right on Perfect Keto's website, they have a blog post that says, can exogenous ketones help you lose weight? It says one common misconception is that taking ketone supplements will induce instantaneous weight loss. The truth is that while they're helpful, ketones are only one piece of the puzzle in your weight loss journey. Keep in mind that exogenous ketones are supplements and therefore should be supplementary to a low carb ketogenic lifestyle. They don't trigger weight loss and they won't put you into ketosis. Only a low carb diet of fasting such as intermittent fasting will do that. They can temporarily increase your blood ketone levels and provide physical and mental benefits for the short term. Some of these benefits are helpful when it comes to weight loss. So once again, exogenous ketones are not going to help you lose weight by putting you into nutritional ketosis. They are not this magic thing that you can go eat a pack of cookies. I don't know why I keep saying cookies. Right. But, but you, you, you can't eat a pack of cookies, take some exogenous ketones and act like the cookies never happen. It yeah. just doesn't work that way. Will you have ketones in your blood? Yeah, you can go eat a whole ton of cookies or candy or anything and take ketones and you're immediately gonna show ketones in your blood. But you're not in nutritional ketosis. You're not burning any fat. It's not helping you lose any weight. As a matter of fact, in my opinion, it's going to make it worse and harder and yeah. take longer because what's gonna happen is you're gonna eat the cookies. You're going to have carbohydrates in your system. You're gonna take the ketones because you wanna get back into ketosis because you wanna see a number on a scale or a number on like a little meter. Now your body's gonna use those ketones first because it likes them. Then it's gonna go after the carbohydrates and in the meantime, possibly store them as fat because it didn't need them right away. And then it's gonna go after the fat. Better thing, you eat a pack of cookies for some reason, you act like it never happened, you move on and you get right back onto your keto lifestyle and you don't bother wasting a bunch of money. With that said, is there anything wrong with them? No, so long as you're using them for what they're intended. Increased cognitive function, and a little bit of energy, but you absolutely do not need them. I know why they're being sold so hard right now at this time. Why? I mean, I will tell you why. Um, probably people started on keto in January mm -hmm. and you had that initial whoosh of weight loss, maybe something like seven or 10 pounds, like a big weight loss number. Then you get into February and things level out and you start to lose weight in what is sustainable amount, like a half to, to one pound weight loss per week. That is a reasonable and a good weight loss, but people are not really satisfied with that. They mm -hmm. want to go back to those 10 pound, 20 pound a week, you know, numbers in their mind, how it should be, like mm -hmm. how they should lose weight. And so they're looking for something. Does anybody promise me quick weight loss? And they that's, want to cheat. They want to cheat. And that's where the exogenous ketones step in and they're like, why, yes, I can promise you that you're gonna dump a bunch of, of weight. And then, you know, you buy that and all they're gonna do is take your money. You're not gonna experience more and extra faster weight loss. It's just going to take time. It's like the video that we had with the blender. Just keep going. The weight loss will happen, the pounds will come off, but it's gonna take time. This isn't like a fast speed up process. Mm -hmm. And again, we're not, I wanna say it again, we are not against exogenous ketones. We are against anybody going into our Facebook group or anything else and telling people that they are going to help you lose weight because they won't. So if you don't wanna use Perfect Keto, which you don't have to, you can, there's plenty of other companies that use GoEHB. But what we are asking is there is no promoting of multi-level marketing companies in our Facebook group. Yeah. And just, and I don't have a problem with multi-level marketing companies, but our Facebook group is a safe space. 
Yeah. And I don't like the way certain ones are marketing things. So we're just not promoting it at all. And any of those kind of posts are just going to be deleted off of the Facebook group. Yeah. So now that we've had that rant. So box over. Uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And then we're going to come back with this week's comments. You know what I'm typing in the chat right now? What? I wish you were here. Because <laughs> it's March. St. Patrick's Day. That's the next holiday. That's right. So, and you know what's really good about St. Patrick's Day? What? It's a completely keto holiday. It is because corned corn beef, beef and, and cabbage. cabbage. Just get rid of the potatoes and corned beef and cabbage. And I love corn. He I, loves We get corned beef every corn year. Beef. We get two corned beefs. One for me and one for everybody else in the family. Yeah. And Aldi is usually a great source Especially for corned beef. Especially the day after. Yeah. Because then you can just like load up at 50% off, stick them all in the freezer, and then you can eat corned beef all year long. That would be... Oh, here we go. Here comes Charity. <laughs> Hello. Corned corn beef all year long would be Joe's love language for sure. Okay. So you're going to go down, and we're going to get into this week's Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week. So if you're new to our channel, uh, we like to go into our Facebook group and find somebody who put up something that was very inspirational to the rest of the group because that group is just for you guys, right? So this week's Keto College Adjunct Professor of the Week is Jennifer. Hey, Jennifer. Jennifer said, just a reminder that you can do it. Whatever it is, you have what it takes. We can wake up every morning and make better choices, drink more water, feed our bodies healthy, nutritious food, move our body, support a friend or a family member, or even ask for help if you need support. Try to remind yourself that every morning is an opportunity for a fresh new start. I love that so much, Jennifer. Um, and it really ties in well with our challenge for March. Okay. I had no idea that, that she was going to be our adjunct professor this week. But yeah, so a lot of times when it comes to March, you associate it with St. Patrick's Day and luck. And yeah. it's just like, you know, just... Just dumb luck. It just happens. Either some people are lucky in their health goals or some people are not lucky. I can remember my mom and I mean, well, all my family saying things like, well, that person's just naturally thin or mm -hmm. naturally healthy. And it's like, it just happened to them. Right. And that's not true, right? Like it's not lucky. It's good choices. And you have the ability to make good choices. And so every day in March, we're going to be um, having a different challenge where you need to take a look at what is a good choice that you made that led to you be su being successful and not necessarily you just being lucky in that area. So like if you're making a brilliant breakfast choice, you're going to have a good result, not because you were lucky, but because you made a good choice in that area. Yeah. Now, if you want to follow us along with the monthly challenge, it's posted every day on Instagram as well as our Facebook page. And if you don't have any social media, we also post it every day on the homepage of our website, you go to www.2crazyketos.com, scroll down just a little bit and you're gonna see the most recent video and right next to that is what the daily motivation challenge is. Okay, so next we have our subscriber of the week. Now, if you're new to our channel and I know we have 1200 new people. Welcome guys. Um, so every week we like to pick somebody from our group who has put up their success story. And we ask you guys, please go and share your stories. We don't want you to share your story because we need content. It is all about helping you guys. And the bottom line is there is somebody out there right now who is going through what you're going through, but they think they're alone. Yeah. So when you share your story, they see that and they're like, oh, okay, somebody else knows what I'm going through and it helps motivate them. And your story, it doesn't have to be at the end of your journey after no. you've lost 300 pounds. It could be, I haven't like, you know, had a diet soda in four days. Whatever it is, any kind of success, please share your stories on our Facebook group. There's a link for it down below. Okay, so this week's subscriber of the week is Shaniqua. Hey, Shaniqua. She says, Joe and Rachel always say we should share our stories. Yes, I we started do. keto as a way to potentially get off of my high dose steroids for an autoimmune skin condition that let me spotted from head to toe. I looked like a leopard and had unbelievable mood swings. Three years of keto later, I get compliments on my even skin tone often. I never wear makeup and I'm over 35. I'm not keto perfect every day, but I know what I can do to keep myself looking and feeling good. Oh my wow. lord. 
gorgeous. There I like is, that. That is an awesome picture. Okay, there is absolutely no way that you were 35 years old. <laughs> absolutely no way. You probably get carded all of the time for being 21. That is amazing. But yeah, I mean, when Caleb was in his senior year of high school and he was doing keto, mostly for cognitive function, honestly, mm -hmm. and a side effect of that was his skin completely cleared up. Yeah, because he had like the worst acne, acne in high school. No more acne, no more on his neck or back. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. So yes, thank you for sharing that because keto does amazing things for our skin. You look amazing, Shaniqua. Gorgeous. Okay, so let's get into last week's comments from the actual keto on the couch. And the first one is from Dawn. Hey Dawn. She said, please help me understand what is this premiere video stuff? Are you live or are you not i'm confused and if you've explained it i've missed it thank you so okay so if you are watching this currently on monday morning at 10 a.m we are live in the chat the video was recorded prior like right usually we record it on saturday sometimes on sunday so we've already recorded this but what we're doing is is we're launching it at 10 a.m every single monday 10 a.m eastern time and we are live in the chat, so you can kind of talk along with us. So maybe if a topic comes up within Keto on the Couch and you have a question on it, you can ask it right there in the chat and we're there to answer it. Now, once the actual video is over, which is generally about 45 minutes to an hour for Keto on the Couch, we'll probably stay for about five more minutes if anybody else is chatting and then we kind of go off and then it goes back to a normal video. Yeah. Now we may do this with some other videos in the future where this is kind of like the test phase to see how you guys like it. But we're considering also adding it in when we do our coffee talks and our let talk about it and things like that. Not so much the recipes, but some of the more informational videos where people may have questions. So let us know down in the comment section. If you like this. If you'd like to see it in other videos as well. It reminds me so much of Spaceballs <laughs> where the guy's explaining like, is this in the future or is this now now? And now, it's like, now. this is now now. No, it's now now. Now, now. Now, now, now. Yeah. So next, the next one is from Michelle. Hey, Michelle. She says, you have a ghost in your screen. Ever so often, you can see what appears to be a person behind you in the screen. That's just our angels. <laughs> That's just the angels. I'm always praying. No. Actually, we turned our front family room or living room into our studio, and there is a giant bay window yeah. in directly in front of us. So depending on the time of the day we film, we do have these big like drop down curtains, but there's cracks in between the curtains. So if a car passes by. So if by, a car passes, sometimes the sun comes shadows. through. And I just have to think ahead of time that we need to make sure it's like that. So, you know, occasionally it shows up. So we apologize for that. Yeah. So uh, next one is from Amanda. Hey, Amanda. She said, hi, guys. I keep hearing you say that you go by total carbs and not net. So please tell me, how many total carbs do you allow? This is a personalized question. So it really has to go with how long have you been doing keto? What are you trying to do? Um, most people are going to tell you 20 net carbs. I started on net carbs. But when I started on net carbs, you didn't have all of these keto products. The biggest product you had out there that had that had a lot of total carbs but low net carbs was Quest Bars. Right. And that was it. After that, there were no bars. You had keto bars, but keto bars was good stuff. And then you had your homemade stuff. But you didn't have to worry about all of these fibers and everything else. But what's happened now is you have a lot of these products that have all kinds of wonky ingredients and you don't know how it's going to affect you. So it's best to have what we talk about is a total carb cap. So if you want to do net carbs, 20 net carbs, and then set a total carb cap, which we suggest to be around 40, but do not exceed 50, but still keep net carbs at 20. Okay, and that's gonna make it so that you don't do something silly like say, hey, I can fit five Oreos. There we go with the cookies again. I can fit five Oreos in 50 total carbs. Well, yeah. that doesn't work. You right. still gotta keep the sugar and the wheat and that kind of stuff out. If you're just doing total carbs, I would tell you anywhere between 10 and 30 to 40 total carbs if you're keeping it a whole food. Now, a lot of people will say like, I'm zero total carbs. It's almost impossible. Yeah. If you're eating eggs, you're not zero total carbs. If you're having shrimp or shellfish, you're not zero total carbs. You're as low as you can possibly get 
If you have liver, you're not zero total carbs, but you're super low. So I like to say 10 to 30 or 40, see how you feel. If you're at 20 or 30 total carbs and you're not having any success, and I'm not talking about after five days, I'm talking about after like a month, you're seeing no movement, not just on the scale, but like you're not losing size, maybe try lowering a little bit. Maybe try doing something like only eating carnivore for a month and seeing how your body reacts and then slowly add in vegetables back in. Right. Okay, so next one is from Audrey. Hey, Audrey. She says, huge amounts of weight loss quickly is definitely not sustainable. Chances are the weight didn't come in a few weeks. It shouldn't leave that way either. Slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what we say all of the time. A lot of times people jump ship. They've had the, been on this. I mean, for me, I was on the sad American diet for more than 40 years. So in order to be fair, if I'm really trying to compare, I need to give keto 40 years to see which one is better. So that's my advice. Don't just jump ship. We've changed fuel sources before we abandon, you know, the ship. Let's give it a proper amount of time. Yeah, we just did a video recently uh, featuring a blender. I'll leave a link for that right up here where we talk about persistence, right? You can't give anything a week and then say like, it doesn't work. It doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. I mean, you have to give your body time. It, we put this weight on, we screwed up our bodies, we got fatty liver disease. It didn't happen in one day. It didn't happen in one week. Heck, it didn't happen in one year. You know, we say it all the time. If you never lost a pound, you went on keto, but you don't lose one pound, but every medical condition you have goes away. Would it be worth it? It would for me. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that we're on the other side of that. So it's challenging. If you if you haven't started experiencing better health yet, right. you know, just stick with it. But I can tell you as somebody who's on the other side and just persevered and pushed through, it does happen. And once you no longer have headaches and no longer have skin conditions and I'm not getting UTIs and I'm not, you know what I mean, having all of these different problems, my anxiety is gone, my OCD is gone. You know, once that happens or you stop having um, arthritis pain and inflammation, you start to think like, well, the weight loss is great, yes, right. but I don't want to go back to the pain. I don't mm. care what happens on the scale. I don't want to be uncomfortable and hurting all the time. Yeah, just give your body time to heal. Okay, next one is from Brianna. Hey, Brianna. Brianna said, I had frog legs at a restaurant when I was a kid. Uh -huh. My dad challenged all of us to try them mm -hmm. and they were really good. Uh -uh. My dad hopped out of the restaurant and then hopped on the gas pedal uh -uh. and break all the way home. How cute. I don't think I've ever laughed so hard in my whole life. Frog legs make me smile. I'll try them again, Rachel, if you will. Oh my gosh. Okay, so you brought your adorable dad into this that is like doing the sweetest parenting thing? I feel like Brianna may have tipped the scale for me. Okay. I'm gonna have to for her dad. Well, there's another one from Donna. Hey, Donna. She says, I can't believe Rachel will eat all that crap on Fear Factor. The bugs, the squid, tarantula fish eggs, but she won't eat frog legs. They're delicious and taste like chicken. I think it is because- You don't like frogs. The animal I am most afraid of in the world should be like a crocodile. It should be like an alligator. You were actually walking like three feet from a shark the other day. That does not make me scared. You were swimming with barracudas. Frogs scare me most of all animals on earth. I am I am terrified. It's a little tiny frog. Okay, here's where, here's where I'm gonna say. They were a plague, <laughs> right? They're a plague in Exodus. So like, maybe there's something to this. Maybe I'm not the only person that thinks that they're like terrible. All right, they were, they were that, a plague. That, that's why we eat them. I'm just throwing that out there. Well, we have one more of them. It's from Laura. Hey, Laura. She says, I would not eat frog legs either, not ever. Yes, okay. Laura, I am so with you, except for now, like the dad with the hopping car, like, that's so sweet. I feel like I need to give it a try. There were a couple of subscribers that are trying to figure out how they can mail them to us. Oh, no. Please don't. Please don't. <laughs> I'm still working through it. Next one is from Lynette. Hey, Lynette. Lynette wants to know how many calories we eat in a day. I could not even tell you because we don't count calories we anymore. We don't count calories anymore. Um, if you want a guesstimate, it's over 2,500. Yeah. Um, but we, we only are counting 
the grams of protein and grams of fat. We're eating the one to one. If you go to our website and on the website, if you go to where it says what are macros and the macro calculator, it will explain. We've got several videos about it, but basically we eat one gram of protein for each pound of our goal weight. And uh, then from there, I'm actually doing lean body mass, but Rachel is doing her goal weight because she's very close to the goal weight. And then we don't exceed that amount in fat and carbohydrates because protein calories don't matter. Yeah. Okay. Your body's not really using the protein for energy. So we only concern ourselves with fat. And when you count up calories, it's also including the protein. So we, we really don't count calories at all anymore. Okay, next one is from Shauna. Hey, Shauna. She says, I would love to see your reaction video on your first videos. It is nice to see how far we've come. Thank you for enduring all the anxiety and stress and continuing to make these videos. Thanks, Shauna. And thanks for my avocado. You can see my avocado over there. Oh, yeah. How sweet. So, yeah, we are going to do that video. We're going to pull out one of our first videos. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be very cringy, but you know what's the most encouraging? Because I got my hair cut this week is going back to revisit it to see how added protein and getting healthy has helped my hair. Yeah. Those first videos, like I had a short haircut mostly because I had a lot of bald spots. Oh, I like, remember I that. mean, there was just so much. You don't like, have bald spots anymore. I don't. I mean, I'm looking. I'm still Rachel looking used good. to come to me every day. Can you cover my bald spot? Yeah. And here's some hairspray. Yeah. So keep going, said. Hey, keep going. A reaction video would be fun to watch. We can celebrate with you the subtle changes that you may not have even realized until you watch a video of yourselves back then. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm continuing to make different fashion choices, except for it's it's always weird, right? Like it's, it's never gonna be a normal fashion. One thing that I notice when I look back at old videos to now is, how much stronger I have become. Mm -hmm. Like I'm not, like I, it, it didn't just like lose weight, but now I'm starting to gain muscle. And I honestly never thought that that would be a reality for me. I never thought I would be strong, yeah. ever. So uh, let's go ahead and take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back with all of the Facebook comments. I am so glad you're here. I love you. Do you know that I love you? <laughs> Okay, uh, first one is from Karen. Hey Karen, she says, hi everyone. I am new to the Two Crazy Ketos family. Well, welcome. I am hooked. Does anyone have a list of times that 2KK goes live? Also, what days are videos uploaded and to what social media? Thank you in advance for your help. Okay, so um, we are getting better and better at being consistent. So proud. We are, we are consistently inconsistent. No, we're getting better. But right now, we're 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 getting we're not getting leaving better. ourselves. Okay, so out. here's our schedule: Mondays, 10 a.m. every single week, um, unless there's an issue, which we will always notify you ahead of time. Will be keto on the couch where it will premiere. So it will always go live at 10 a.m. Eastern time, and we're going to premiere it. Um, Thursdays, 8:30 p.m. Eastern time, we do our live stream. Then we upload at least three other videos per week, usually more, but not every single week. But that's the Wild West. Yep. It could be any time. Yep, and that's all on YouTube. We always try to get our videos up in the morning before noon. Uh, it just comes down to our schedule. In the past, we were always like, we wanna get it up like first thing in the morning. But what happened is I would stay up till three or four o'clock in the morning to get a video edited and then sleep for two hours. And, and mama said no more of that. I have made my sleep a priority and I'm still working on that. So now it's like at, at 10, 30, 11 o'clock, I'm walking away from the computer and if it's not done, it's not done. It's gonna get done in the morning, which means the video either A, isn't going up or B, uh, it's gonna go up a little bit later. That is that is where we're trying to like get ourselves ahead a couple of days. Yeah. Um, but all of the videos go up on YouTube. Occasionally, we will do a surprise live stream on YouTube. That's why you need to make sure you're hitting that bell button because if you hit the bell button, you'll be notified that we are going live. Also, occasionally, Rachel goes live in Facebook. Yeah. Now, you also make Instagram posts. We're on Instagram. I do also post to Twitter, but we're not as active in, in there as mm -hmm. we are on Instagram or on Facebook. 
and Instagram, Rachel posts throughout the day as well as a daily motivation every single day. And there's always recipes. Mm -hmm. Every day we have a new recipe out so that you don't get bored on this keto lifestyle. There's always something new and interesting to make. Now, if you do want to message us, the best way to message us is through Instagram. Uh, we don't always see the Facebook Messenger, because the bottom line is when you've got so many social medias, you can only check so many things. Ding, so ding, ding, ding. you can either message on Instagram, and if you don't have Instagram, you can also message info at twocrazyketos.com. So those are the best two ways. Sometimes it's gonna take us a little while. It just depends. Remember, this isn't the only thing we do. We both have several jobs. Yeah. <laughs> but that is, and then we also do monthly live streams for our Patreon members, which there's a link for down below. Okay, uh, next is from Stephanie. Hey, Steph. She says, happy Thursday, 2KK family and friends. Anything new you do in life should be done in baby steps. Being prepared, knowing your why, being ready to take responsibility in, for your choices, doing research, which is endless, taking that leap to get an accountability partner, planning and staying ahead in the game, becoming successful. If you are all over the place, sit and write a list out and take those baby steps and each day or so, mark those baby steps off. Before you know it, you'll be taking even bigger steps. That is so, so wise. Yes. So Stephanie is very active in our Facebook group. And, and if you're awesome. looking for somebody to ask questions, go ahead and seek her out in our Facebook group. She, she along with like Shelly and Heath and several other people are extremely active in there and are consistently making posts like that to help keep everybody motivated. She keeps me motivated. You you absolutely do, Steph. And also, like, I think about Lisa, too, and Steph also, and Heath, where they're posting, and Christopher, where they're posting recipes. They're uh, All of them are amazing cooks, and they're giving you great ideas for how you can make every single day special and fun. Because mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be boring. I mean, can you do the keto diet with hot dogs and mustard? Yes, absolutely. But can there's, be boring. But there's so much more you can do, and they're always coming up with something awesome. Yeah. Our uh, next one is from Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Kelly said, okay, I'm usually a lurker, but since I've watched 2KK's last two videos that they talk about a partner and accountability, I feel like I may need one, and maybe that will help. I don't have anyone in my friends and family that are doing keto and they just don't understand what I'm doing. I've lost 80 pounds five years ago and have kept it off wow. but want to lose another 20 pounds this year. I need someone that has some experience with this lifestyle and can share what has worked for a year. Well, first of all, congratulations, Kelly, because that is incredible. 80 mm -hmm. pounds down, that's awesome. Yeah, I would go into our Facebook family group and put just a little quick message. I need an accountability partner. I guarantee you somebody is going to answer you. Yeah. So next one is from Joyce. Hey Joyce, she says, I'm wondering if store brand bacon with sugar as an ingredient on the label is not keto. I did buy sugar free, but it's so expensive. Please give some suggestions. Thanks in advance. Okay, I have no problem with it. Depending on how much sugar is there, which you can tell by you looking at the nutritional label. And if you see more than like one gram of carbs per serving, I would not get that one. There a lot of times is some sugar in the curing process, but also remember it's gonna get burned off when you're cooking oh, it. Oh yeah. It's like one of the reasons you really shouldn't use store-bought bacon to uh, like cure your Blackstone because that sugar kind of goes on the top and it doesn't give you that nice season on there. Uh, but if it's only got a little bit of sugar, I wouldn't worry about it. You do what you can with the finances you have. I mean, Dr. Barry, like Rachel said, hot dogs and mustard. Is there sugar in hot dogs? Absolutely. Can you do it? Yes. As you are saving money in other areas, maybe you wanna not get the ones with sugar, but at least look at the ones that like aren't crusted with sugar. Right, well, and you might also want to look at the Two Crazy Keto's recipe for bacon because mm -hmm. we make our own bacon and it becomes very cost effective because you can get pork belly, you know, very reasonable and it, and it goes a long way. Yeah, pork belly is like $2, $2.50 a pound and Look at how much bacon is. So it just takes a couple of weeks to actually go through the whole so curing process. Worth it though. But it tastes delicious. But again, if, if all you can find or afford is bacon that has sugar in it or that's what's on clearance, that's what we're buying. So yeah. go ahead and buy it and don't worry about it. Uh, next one is from Tracy. Hey, Tracy. Tracy said, so week two of higher protein, I stepped on the scale, ugh. Week one, lost 1.2 pounds. Week two, gained two pounds. Anyone else experience this? My pants feel looser, but oh, that number, that was staring back at me. Sticking with it because I'm not snacking and I'm feeling satisfied throughout the day. I know, I know, I need to stay off the scale, but that's a tough habit to break. 
I had ankle reconstruction surgery on December 30th and still not allowed to put any weight on my foot, so exercising is still not happening. I know how you feel. It's what I'm going through. It's persistence. Trust the process. Yes, you got to stay off the scale. Yes, it's hard, but also look like you had ankle replacement or ankle re reconstructive surgery. That in itself should be making you gain weight, and it's not. So if your pants are feeling looser, that's what matters. It goes back to what we said before. If you never lose a pound, but all of your health benefits or all your health problems go away, is it worth it? And you really have to try to convince yourself Yes, it would be worth it because once you do that, the pounds are going to melt off. Some of this is a mental game. Well, and a lot of times, you know, there's a lot of factors mm -hmm. to like just that one sided scale number. Mm -hmm. So um, I had shared my numbers because I had my last weigh in for February this past week. But just to kind of reiterate in case you didn't catch the live. Right. Um, now, remember, we're coming off of January where we're not really eating. Right. Going into February, I was prepared for some weight, weight gain. gain, even though in my mind, I'm like, well, that shouldn't happen, right? Because if I'm, if you know, I should not have to do this. Like, I'm frustrated even if when I'm expecting it. But so my weight, I, I went down only 1.7 pounds this month in February. But, oh, my goodness, I went back to eating. You went from eating 1,200 calories Again, we don't really do calories to, if you added it up with the protein, like 2,500. And I lost 1.7 pounds, okay? But here's the thing, that's only one side of the number. I also went up 2.8 pounds in muscle, mm -hmm. which, which I gained, which is incredible. My fat mass went down 5.7 pounds, which is like incredible. And my percentage of body fat went down 3.6% in a single wow. month. Wow. So again, you get on the scale and you're like, okay, well that doesn't look like it moved. But a lot is going on behind those numbers mm -hmm. and good things. And that's why we say the scale is the devil. Like you've got to be- not telling you the whole go story. Go buy your pants, go buy measurements. So our next one is from Michelle. Hey Michelle, she says, so I thought this was interesting. Initially trying the one-to-one -one protein, the scale went down. It's now been back up a pound higher than I started. Pants are baggier in the butt and legs. The body fat on the scale is down 1%. This is why I put no stock in the actual number. And this is not uncommon. I mean, this is why, we, again, we talk about the scale as a devil. You really want to look at those trends, okay? When you get on the scale every day, you know, you see people talk about, like, I'm up 0.3 pounds today. I'm down 0.4 pounds today. Like, I have zero, absolutely no change at all. That's almost impossible. Yeah. Because your body weight fluctuates up, like, five pounds in a day especially for women. So looking at a daily scale is kind of worthless. You wanna look at a trend overall, because if you look at it daily, it's gonna kind of up like this, but what you wanna look at, does it start high and come low, or like body, say gaining muscle, does it start low and come high? Because daily, it's gonna kind of be like this. Yeah. That's why, like, I think once a week is more than enough if you're measuring not body weight, but all of the other stuff. Because even once a month, I don't think it's good. Because if you do once a month, what happens if the one day that you choose is the day that it's like you're higher in water weight that day? No, you can absolutely, like you you look at mine because I'm only weighing once a week and you see it's like a stair step, you know, for the fat. And then you see the muscle is like, same thing, going yeah. up the stairs. And that's what you want to see. Like, is it really a consistent going up, going down? Then I can look as an overview of the month and be like, yeah, this month I went down in right. weight and up in muscle. Yeah, but have more than two points for the month to be measuring your muscle and your fat and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's it's not uncommon that if you're eating the higher protein, your weight may go up, but your pants are getting looser because right now, if you were eating very low protein like we were, then your body's now repairing muscle. And so you're gonna be building muscle, especially if you're doing any kind of workout or anything like that. You're gonna be repairing and building muscle. And so it's good, the muscle's gonna go up, but you're gonna see like Rachel, like an overall body fat percentage going way down because her, she lost a little bit of fat, but she gained more muscle, but higher muscle with even, even if you don't lose a pound in fat, if you gain three pounds of muscle, but don't lose a pound in fat, you have a lower body fat percentage because you have more muscle. Well, and I'd rather strike against that number and be focused on that number, like the body fat percentage, instead of playing around with those 10 pounds 
that 10 pounds where it's like up or down and it feels, I mean, it's like you feel that it's wishy-washy, right? Mm -hmm. Like you just feel like that's not an actual opponent I'm dealing with. Like this is nonsense. Right. When you're dealing with muscle or you're dealing with fat percentage, you feel like, okay, this is actual movement. Yeah. Okay, next one is from Michael. Hey, Michael. Michael said, keto chow question. Does unsalted butter work better in sweet flavors than salted? I've been only using salted butter and I was wondering, does butter give the best flavor to keto chow? Yes, so butter a, is better. Butter gives the best flavor. Chris and Mary will tell you the same thing. It enhances the flavor. Heavy cream will mute the flavor, Which is but wild. it makes it a little bit thicker. Yeah. So we use melted butter and we use salted butter. So I actually always want to add salt to it anyway. I've noticed no difference in flavor. I don't think there's enough salt in salted butter to really affect the taste at all on keto chow. Okay, next one is from Vicky. Hey, and Vicky. she just said, for Rachel. Balls and no balls. Oh my gosh, that is the greatest restroom I've ever seen in my life. I've never seen that before. <laughs> balls or no balls. Oh man. <laughs> Okay, so we have one more, and it's from Christy. Hey, Christy. She wrote, I was diagnosed with type 2 in April of 2019. I had an A1C of 14. Wow. I followed a prescribed diet from my doctor, and they just kept upping my insulin each visit, and nothing was getting better. Another doctor that my hubs works with suggested low-carb keto. Yay! We both took the plunge, and after a couple of months, my A1C was down to the point that I didn't need any diabetes meds wow. anymore. I've lost approximately 60 pounds and I feel great. I still have a way to go weight wise, but nothing can take me back to the standard American diet. Christy, thank you so much for sharing your story because I, you know, we just need these reminders. First of all, congratulations. That is incredible. 60 pounds of weight loss is incredible. And I don't want to under celebrate that because that is freaking mm -hmm. amazing. But when you're able to change your medical identity yep. and stop being like labeling yourself a type two diabetic and you move past that because I was there when my mom, you know, got to, they changed it in her medical file and she no longer had to identify as a diabetic. That is such an incredible moment. And the, the emotional weight that's lifted right. as well as the, the health hope for the future that that just descends on you is is so awesome. Like that is incredible and congratulations to you and your husband. I mean, that is amazing. Whew. Well, that is gonna be this week's Keto on the Couch. Now, please do us a favor. If you like seeing videos like this, there are 102 more episodes of Keto on the Couch. Wow. And I'm gonna link them right over there. Also, make sure you take a look at our most recent video, which I'm gonna put right over here. But whether you head this way or you head this way, don't forget to head this way. Subscribe to our channel and click the little bell icon in that way. No matter what shenanigans we get into, you'll be alerted to it. Until next week. Bye. bye.